episode 419 of the pancakes and power slam show another p and p photo shoot with this time former wwe tag team champion ken doan kenny dykstra kenny from the spirit squad we're gonna have some fun tonight let's go we do it on the pancakes of power sam show we're gonna have some fun tonight just like we do each and every week so without further ado let's go <gasps> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah you already know what time it is, time it is. it's that official time when we take this worldwide let's go let's go Listen, listen, so now it's time to turn it up. Surf the radio waves as we begin to burn it up. We all up in your area like landscape. landscape. Definitely bringing you the power of the pancakes. It's a mandate that you tune in. It's time to move out so we can move in. And recognize that this is no illusion. I'm here to clear the air so that there is no confusion. It all started off in the book of Genesis when Jacob was wrestling with who he thought was his nemesis. And when the man saw he couldn't overpower him, he touched his hip, but he really couldn't devour him. And from that point, then we hear a name change, rearrange the game, so now we gotta change. Lanes. Uh, so I'm here to let you know it's time to listen to the Pancake and Power Slam show. Let's go. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam show. Uh. Turn it up, turn it up, it's the pancake and power slam. Turn it up, turn it up, it's the pancake and power slam. Turn it up, turn it up, it's the pancake and power slam show. Uh. Turn it up. Uh, 
episode 419 ladies and gentlemen this is the pancakes and power slam show i am chris featherstone as always live and living color getting funky like a monkey if you will baby yeah so we're gonna jump right into it we got a lot to talk about tonight as you would imagine we do have quite a bit to talk about and it's going to be very very fun so i was able to get this uh pmp photo shoot together again and and it's going to be a lots of fun so this week we're going to do a pmp photo shoot with uh my guy he's been on the show a few times i think like maybe twice i think um uh yeah he's uh, we we had a lot to talk about then and we're going to have a lot to talk about now especially with this uh with this photo shoot going on so it's going to be uh it's going to be lots of fun and i'm sure that he will he will thoroughly enjoy himself as well so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring him on the show. Former WWE Tag Team Champion, Kenny Doan. How are you tonight, my sir? My hey, friend. what's happening? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Good, man. Good. It's great to have you again, man. Yeah, I've been on a few times, but uh, not like this. Never like this. This, yes. is, this is new. That's right. I like this. And I yeah. saw some familiar faces on your intro, like yeah. Marty. Yeah. Uh, fish off PN yeah. News. Yes. <laughs> who I've never met, but I would like to meet PN News. I, actually, I got him written down on my notes of things to search tomorrow. Oh, nice. I'm working from my office. <laughs> nice. Watch some of his matches. I can get y'all I can get y'all linked up, man. He uh me and him still we still chat. He actually messaged me last week just to simply uh check on me and ask me how I was doing. Just where's he point. from? Uh he's from uh, Nebraska, I believe. Yeah, I believe. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Going yep. Home. So, uh, you ready to dive into this, man? Sure. Let's, let's oh, jump into this. All right. Let's see what you Here have. we go, man. Here we go. So, this is the PMP photo shoot, Ken Dome style. So, uh, what I'm hey, gonna do? Who do you have next week? Uh, next week. Uh, let me check and see my schedule. Episode 420. 420. <laughs> <laughs> curiosity uh, next week i have let me check my schedule um ice train's uh scheduled to be come back okay okay yeah and then after him is uh jimmy corderas so oh jimmy yep <clears throat> cool dude yeah he is man cool dude i figured 420 episode 420 i was i didn't know if it was like a rvd, RVD show or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> Chris Masters. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, Chris, Ma Chris Masters has been on the show like two or three times. Uh, that would be interesting to have him back uh, on the show. Uh, <laughs> 420 episode. Uh, or Sabu. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, cool. So uh, we got a lot to, of we got a lot of Q and A. We're going to save the Q and A for the end. Um, uh, just a few questions, but I think by the time we get finished with this photo shoot, uh, you would know people would know just what they need to know about uh, Ken Doan. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a picture, and then you're gonna just uh, share your thoughts, man. What you what you were thinking at that time? What 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 caused that time? How you were feeling? All that good stuff. It's okay? great. Cause I have no idea what you're showing. That's right. That's right. This is all new. So here we go. Oh, this, I was thinking, th so this was uh, Velocity. We were working Bart, no, we were working Billy Gunn and Bob Holly. And That's this right. was when they were known at the time to just like really just beat the piss out of people. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking like this guy started the match, Vince Vicalo. He started the match. And like we were, you know, you're always trained like if I hit you hard, then, mm -hmm. you know, expect to get hit the same way back. Mm -hmm. So if you hit them light, then you get hit light. So you just kind of work with like the person. Yeah. But I could see that they were just teeing off on him and he just wasn't fighting back. So mm -hmm. when it came time for me to get in, Bob gave me a good shot and I just hit him just like that. And then mm -hmm. the rest of the match, we were really light. And then actually after the match, he was like, man, that was great. He's like, you just fired back at me. He's like, that's what, that's what we need here. Mm -hmm. So actually he complimented me a lot on that. And I gained a lot of respect from him and Billy uh, in that match right there. I was actually looking for that match not too long ago. I just can't find it. Oh, nice. It's, and I took uh, the Alabama slam on that, and I was thinking the whole time, like, oh, God, don't kill me. <laughs> but it was yeah. all right. It was fine. Yeah. You, this was 2004, so you were, what, 18? 
maybe 17 or 18. 17 or 18. Yeah. Uh, how in the world did uh, you manage to get uh, this spot at uh, 17, pushing 18, barely legal, perhaps well, not legal? At that point. So I would always like do the math and minus out, you know, like 1985 or whatever. So mm -hmm. I was 18 at the time. But also I had worked independence with Sergeant Slaughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that time he was there booking the extras. So he would, every time he'd see me, he'd be like, Oh, I got a TV spot for you, kid. So mm -hmm. I was like, cool. Thanks. Like mm -hmm. it always worked out for me. And mm -hmm. then when I, when I went back to high school after that, like, you know, that aired on Saturday, but that Monday, Tuesday, everybody was like, Oh my goodness, you were on TV. Like it didn't even matter that I got the hell beat out of me. <laughs> it just mattered that I was there. Yes. Yes. It just mattered. So, uh, so I, I asked D-Lo the same question um, when he was an enhancement talent. Uh, Ten years actually before you were here, you were enhancement talent here in 2004. So he he, he said he got paid 250. How much did you get paid for an enhancement talent in 2004? Yeah, that sounds about right. 250. Yeah. yeah so okay. inflation didn't matter at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Ten years later, it's the, the same uh, check. <laughs> yeah, we need a stimulus for extras. Right, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so what was the, so how was this planned out? Was it just uh, go out there and get the the, the brakes beat off of you and just go home? Like, what was the whole give you like six minutes, maybe. Uh, mm. You know, you don't even get an entrance, but right. you know. So the first guy, Vince, he had something a little planned with Bob and Billy just to get something quick in, and then mm -hmm. I was going to get in to the point where we could somehow get just like 30 seconds of heat on them yeah. just so they can actually make a hot tag for Billy, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it wasn't really too much. It's more so these things, these type of matches, I would say just don't hurt nobody. Don't screw up and sell really good because that's what they're really looking for. They don't care necessarily the match. They know it's not going to be a great match, Sure. but they sure. just want to see what you can do and how you can make their guys look. Uh, yeah. Colin Delaney actually did a, a match like this with Viscera, Big Daddy V at the time, and he did so good that they paid him twice and then they kept bringing him back and eventually they hired him. He never went to developmental or anything. Wow, wow. Yeah, I was I was just about to ask that. So essentially, even as an enhancement talent, you're still kind of making the pitch, right? Yeah, that's that's your that is your uh tryout right there. Exactly. You know, if, yeah. if we can if you can lose and do this great gracefully. Well, then we know that we can trust you later on to actually make you a winner. You know, That's if you're right. willing to take this and go through all this port part, yep. then, you know, we can we can actually start to invest in you, especially if you do it well. Yep, absolutely. That was either our first or second debut because I had pitched the idea to have us run through that Spirit Squad banner like they do like in football games. Mm -hmm. But then after the first or second week, they were like, you know what? It's too much expensive, and we can't keep coming up with this every week. Like that, <laughs> that's what they told us. It's too expensive. <laughs> what? Wow. what? To run through paper? So <laughs> I guess they just didn't want. It. Maybe it revealed that we were coming out next. I don't know. Ah, I got you. So yeah, so this was uh, Lala versus Coach. Uh, okay, so that was the debut. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that was probably Charlotte. I think. Mm. Uh, but that was nerve wracking because like you didn't know what to expect, and it, there was really no direction. Mm -hmm. It was just like, all right, go out and do this. And it was like, okay, but we've never really done this. So we're not really sure what to do. So a lot of this stuff, we kind of like our movements and stuff. We, we probably came up with this, you know, in the back, uh, like 30 minutes before we came out. Cause it was just like, I don't, I don't think they ever really designed for this to get over from the start. Yeah. But once it started getting heat, then they realized, wait, we can actually do something with this. Yeah. 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 I had a cheer for the coach about, uh, <laughs> do you remember what it was? It's about the rumble. Uh, or maybe that was the pay-per-view one. Uh, the coach rocks when it, when the coach rocks, oh, yeah, he yeah, rocks yeah. it all the way it's down. <laughs> yeah. That was a pretty, uh, pretty, on the fly type of cheer there that it, it, oh, didn't it, like, fly. it didn't seem like there was much thought into that but it was pretty funny though so no yeah and a lot of times the cheers or whatever it was we would come up with and they'd be like, okay what's your cheer tonight and we're like we didn't know we had to do one and they're oh, like wow. yeah okay so we're they, we were writing our own promos here see yeah I yeah about that nowadays we, they let us write our own promos not that we did much uh now I don't know if we talked about this before, but what was the idea behind the 
the five? Like, why these five? Uh, I think Nemeth, he was already a caddy for Chavo. Mm -hmm. uh, and they still wanted to bring him back up. Jeter, he was a cornet guy mm -hmm. and from OVW, so they needed something for him. Mondo wasn't even supposed to be in it. That was supposed to be Elijah Burke, uh, but he didn't want to do it. And Mitch on Did the left. Did you do that before? Yeah. Okay. They pitched the original pitch was for Elijah to be in it, but then he oh, was yeah. like, "I just can't do that." So yeah. I then they opened up the spot for Mondo. But then Mitch, he never really knew how to wrestle. He was just entertaining from Tough Enough. He tried out, and next thing you know, he's on Raw. Yeah. So, and I was actually touring with SmackDown for a long time, mm -hmm. wrestling as Ken Doan. So I never mm -hmm. thought this was going to be what I was going to do on Raw. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was perfect for Mondo. It really yeah, was. Like, it really it, was. Yeah. Mondo and Mitch. Mitch yeah. really owned it. Yeah, yeah. So, what, so whatever happened with, with, with Mitch? I don't know. Last I heard, he was in Israel. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? So I don't know what he's up to, but he, he, I don't, like, he never did anything outside of wrestling with wrestling. Oh, okay. But he, like, he never, that's the thing, though. He never really knew of wrestling. He didn't know the background. Uh, he didn't know a lot of that stuff. Like, I remember one time we were in a toy store, uh, and there was a Jim Neidhart figure, and he was like, look, man, they got Tank Abbott wearing pink. And I was like, that's not Tank Abbott, that's Jim Neidhart. And he's like, I don't know who that is. Like, he didn't really, he knew the Bushwhackers because he would do this sometimes on the way yeah. to the ring, just yeah. to pop himself. <laughs> oh, wow. But he really didn't know wrestling at all. Huh, interesting. So so why was he selected then? Was he good in Personality. In Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. Good Very approach. entertaining. He made a lot of people laugh backstage. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, it, it benefited him uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Next thing you know, he's a tag team champion. So it was like, okay, this is what I do. Exactly. <clears throat> uh, that's Big Show. That was Chicago. That was the night after WrestleMania. That's when y'all won the tag titles. Yeah, we gave him the high spirits. Woo, he was a heavy one to get up. Yeah. My, oh, my. And we found out the night before at the WrestleMania after party. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the writers, I think they had too much to drink, one of them at one point, And he was like, you're going to win the belts tomorrow. Oh, really? <laughs> like, okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks. Hopefully oh, yeah. that stays. Don't jinx us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Huh. So, so that, how, how did you feel when, when you were told that? Oh, I was like, no, that's cool. But you never know because everything can always change on the fly. So it was like, even in the middle of the match, I've had matches change, you mm -hmm. know, with the finish change. So, do you um, remember one of those matches that you had? I think change? I was doing something. Oh, man. Maybe I was working Eugene. Okay. And I think he was supposed to go over, but then, like, partway through, they're like, no, you're going to go over. And I'm like, okay. So, oh, wow. Yeah. You just, <laughs> you figure out, you find an exit quickly. Yeah, so so a lot of times it really ain't over until the bell rings. Cause yeah, yeah, because yeah. even when you're told something before the show, I mean, just during the match they can they can flip it. Absolutely, yeah. Anything could happen. Even if something happens earlier in the show that maybe wasn't supposed to happen, an injury or something like that, they could have to change it. Now we got to change it this way or whatever the yeah. case might be. Yeah, yeah. Many so that, that's that's an interesting dynamic because. Yes, it's choreographed. Yes, it's predetermined. But essentially, when you do win that belt, it is a big moment because, yes, it's choreographed. Yes, it's staged. But it can happen to where the decision flips, you know, that that during the match. And when the bell rings, now you know for sure that it's actually over and you actually have the title. So that's Yeah, you can't take it back now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We, and there was actually a time, I'm sure we'll get to it at some point. Uh, this, I think, was Raw. I think this yeah. one, nah, was this when Shane interfered? I'm not sure. No, this is when you beat uh, Shawn Michaels. Uh, it was uh, John Cena and Michaels uh, when, when you know, you know, they lost against uh, all of you. Okay, roll. yeah. One Sean roll. was always the fall guy. Sean always took the fall, so that was nice. Got no, was that was, was that something he was that his call? I don't know whose call it was, but he used he was always cool with everything. Oh, nice. He didn't care. He would always joke and say it doesn't matter, guys, because in the end it's just going to be super kicks all the way across. So, <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. And actually, uh, I saw him not too long ago. I saw him in February at the performance center. I was down there coaching, so it was cool mm -hmm. to catch up with him again. 
Yeah, yeah. He's like he is just in just engulfed in NXT now. He loves NXT, so you can you can tell. Yeah, it's amazing uh, down there. Yeah, it is. How was that experience uh, of you coaching down there? It was great. I went for a week in November, and then I did the first two weeks in February. Uh, uh, and then I'm actually there was supposed to go back. They were talking about going coming back in April, but you know, due to the situations right now, everything's not happening at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll see once everything goes back up. But I loved it down there, man. Just coaching, coaching with them is great because I'm young enough. Uh, and I, I can just still get in the ring and go with them and show them no, this is what it has to feel like. Yep. This is what they're trying to explain to you. And this is what you got to feel. This is what mm-hmm. you need to feel when it's out there. And yep. some of them, they're oh, wow, like that was really good. Like, you know, and sometimes I'll do a lot of one-to-one stuff with them. Uh, you know, when I was there in November, I did some one-to-one stuff with Denzel. Mm-hmm. And just we spent like three hours together just working on his amateur game and how to make that incorporate that into what he does in the ring. Are uh, you talking about uh, Deja Renette, the one who yeah, lost to yeah. uh, Alistair? Well, no, he lost to Seth Rollins on Raw, I think it was. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. For that. yeah. <clears throat> interesting. That's pretty cool. Is that something that you want to do like full time? Like, like, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's just a great atmosphere. There's no, there's not that there's no pressure, mm-hmm. but it's like when you're the one giving the test, you already have the answers. They're the That's ones right. with the questions. That's right. And this That's position right. right here that we're looking me in the ring. I'm going with all the, the questions and everybody else has all the answers. So mm. it's like this, the whole thing is flipped. Like there's not that pressure anymore. Yeah. It's not like walking on ed, on eggshells there. Cause you're, you're the egg carton holder. <laughs> <laughs> right. so you're not worried about walking on anything. So, and you know, teaching I, I do now. So it's like, it's great to have them as students and to teach something that I'm really passionate about and that I've yeah. you know given a lot of my life to. That's More right. than half of my life at this point. Geez, going on 21 years now. Wow. Wow. Man. That's amazing, man. Oh, this was uh, Survivor Series, I think. Cyber Sunday, maybe. Cyber Sunday, yep. Yeah, mm. Dusty Rhodes taking that elbow. That was great. That was cool. And, it was, you know, it was interesting. It was really not full circle, but it was different working with Sarge in that manner, too, because I had worked Sarge when I was, like, 14 years old on the Independence. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's the one who kind of got me all those TV spots at the time that we had seen. So now working with him and Piper and Flair and even doing like we did like a whole European loop with Piper and Flair mm-hmm. and we worked with them for a good like three to five months just every single night. And it was just learning and learning. But wow. that right there was cool working with Dusty. That was fun taking the elbow. Yeah, man. I mean, dude, look at this. I mean, you're in the ring yeah. with four WWE Hall of Famers, man. Like that's huge i mean how, how were you feeling in this moment just it's just you like the, everybody cleared out just you and four wb hall of famers and it just yeah it's cool. like even at the time it's like because you know you see them but i guess looking at it now it means more now because these guys aren't around anymore you know yeah, no, one else, yeah. no one can ever do that spot again no yeah. one can ever take that elbow no one can ever work right there with piper you know what i mean like mm-hmm Sarge, okay. maybe Flair, maybe, but realistically, it's not going to be the same. Like these guys were still working. That's right. Uh, even like I say, a lot of times work with Sean and Hunter, we got to do a whole program with them for a year. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's not many guys on any roster that can say that they have that working one-to-one knowledge with those guys, yep. you know? So that knowledge that they have is only going to get passed on through them talking or those who worked with them. And there's not that many people left that have been able to work with these, this amount of people. That's right. Yeah. And, and Dusty and Piper have passed. So, you know, like you said, you will, you know, there will never be this type of moment again for sure. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I don't know if it was this match. I remember I body slammed Piper and I was like, man, he's so heavy. And then I tagged out and everybody, when I slammed him, he was, he was so heavy, but everybody in my team was like, no, no, no. And I was like, mm-hmm. no. So then we got to the back. He was like, why'd you slam me? I said, I don't know. It's just, I had to put you down. He's like, you're not supposed to slam me. And I was like, are you guys serious? And everybody's like, yeah, you're not supposed to slam Piper. And I was like, nobody told me that. <laughs> like, nobody told me don't slam Piper because of his hip. <laughs> like, I was oh, like, oh, okay. Because of his hip. I was like, wait a minute. I've never heard of that. Is that, yeah, that a you're thing? Not supposed to slam Piper. But I was like, just oh my goodness like wow huh. oh wow interesting but he laughed about it so yeah i'm glad he took it in jest that's good <laughs> yeah yeah that flare 
Yeah, yeah Flair, the, the number one, the first time you beat Flair. Yeah. Oh, is that the Royal Rumble or Raw? That's Raw, Raw, because you had a trifecta. The, the, this yeah, was, I was going to uh, say, there was three times in a row, but the Revolution, I think I wore white. But that was cool working with Flair. That was fun. Uh, what was interesting about working with him was you'd never see I'd never see him. I wouldn't see him in catering. I wouldn't see him all day. Mm-hmm. And like Steamboat was usually our agent. So he'd come up to me when everybody's out at the ring talking. And he's like, have you seen Rick? I don't know. No, I haven't. <laughs> and then like I'd see him about 10 minutes before our segment. And he mm-hmm. would just come up and be like, uh, sunset flip, finish. Or when I go for the figure <laughs> four roll through finish and like that's it he would just tell you the finish and then he would just walk away and start stretching and doing his thing and i was like you know i don't want to go up and say hey i'm thinking of this or yeah okay i guess that's the way it is we're just gonna yeah. figure it out there and that's really what we did every single time i worked with them all i ever had to go off of was just whatever he said was the finish and that was it that's interesting because uh, I've interviewed Steamboat before, and uh, you know he's he's he talked about that, and there's a few people who talked about that too, who's wrestled Flair that I've interviewed before that Flair hated um, going through you know the match before the match. He loved to call it on the fly, so <laughs> it's yeah, definitely not a surprise. Like call it on the fly. I remember one time he. What did he do? He did something to me, sent me outside, and he's like, pull me out. So I, okay, so I grabbed him, pulled him out, and he's like, suplex me. So I remember I stepped back and gave him a punch because I, I was like, did he say that? And I was like, what? He's like, suplex me. I was like, now? Yeah, okay. Like, yeah. I suplexed him on the floor, and I remember it hurt me. Yeah. Like, legit, I sold it going, oh, oh my God, that hurt. Like, how, oh, did that, wow. how did he take that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what – I think we talked about this before, but just you know, the refresh for the for the audience. What was the mentality behind? Like you're really about to legit th- a beat Flair twice, one in a tag and and one on Raw and one in a pay per view. What was the what was the thought about beating Flair three straight times? Uh, me or storyline wise. Just what was the idea? About, like, what was the idea behind you know make giving you that push? Because I remember, I think it was this episode, the the first one that they were saying. Um, I think Lawler was saying uh, there there were it was Lawler, and they were talking about how okay, well he has a last name now, you know, and it was like it was one of those things that when y'all y'all got the garbage trunk dump, you know, from yeah. the Spirit Squad, and, and you came back and. Okay, this guy has a last name as as Dykstra, so you weren't even really pegged in a in a kind of a higher spot, and to come out the gate beating Flair, who who came up with that idea? So the overall plan, I th- from what I was told, was that after Revolution, that was the third victory, mm-hmm. uh, but the next night on Raw, I was supposed to beat Hardy for the Intercontinental Title, and that was going to do something with me and Flair with that. But that same pay-per-view later on that night was when Hunter torn torn his quad. Mm-hmm. So they had to move Flair with Sean to go against Rated RKO. Mm-hmm. So then that kind of left me, you know, elsewhere because it was supposed to do something with me and Flair going forward with the IC title. And then Hardy and I think Carlito at the time or maybe Morrison, uh, they were going to go their own way or they were going to somehow spin back into with us, mm-hmm. with like the four of us or something or even more, maybe with Shelton too. I don't exactly remember, but I know that night I was originally, when I first got there, I was told I was going over on Hardy. But then as the show progressed, that was, you know, right before it started, that's when we found out it was going to go the opposite way because they were now going to move Flair with Sean. Mm, Similar to what we were talking about. You never know. Yeah, so so how quick one goes from here to the opposite. Yeah, wow, interesting. And that must have been the other time I beat him. That was a tag match. Yeah. Yeah. Was that me and Carlito? Uh, yeah, well, it was you and Masters against Masters. Uh, Flair and Carlito, I believe, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was another one too. Even like the tag matches, he would just like we'd kind of have some idea of things that we might do when we're in the ring together, but we didn't know where Flair was. So Flair just okay, just figured out, and when he tagged, he tagged out. When he tagged in, he tagged in. You just gotta, but that's part of being trained properly. You know what I mean? You just gotta know where the match is, where it's yeah. flowing. You know what I mean? And yeah. how to keep that flowing because yeah. you don't want to ruin that momentum. Yeah. And, and you really got to listen to the crowd too, because the crowd's kind of dictating in a way, mm-hmm. which is interesting because now we're looking at wrestling with no crowds. So it's like, I, I always, I say like, we're the dictator of the show, but the crowd is the narrator of the show. Yeah. 
Nice. You know, yeah. so if, if, if they can't understand the message you're sending, then there's going to be no reaction. If there's no reaction, then you kind of got to change up what you're doing yep. because your dictatorship is not working in that moment because no one's moving. Yep. Absolutely. Where now with no crowd, you kind of see, and that's the revolution one. Yep. And that was the same thing. He told me the finish. He said, I'll, I'll come in and punch you. Uh, I'll move the ref. And when I come back, just give me this low blow and roll me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. you, know, like, well, you got 15 minutes or something. Yeah. So you never know. And that same match right before we went out, Vince took his headset off and he said, if you throw him off the top rope, he said, you're both fired. <laughs> so don't do it. Really? Like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, but that's kind of his spot. Like everybody throws him off the top rope huh. and Flair's like, don't worry, we'll figure it out out there. So then during that match, he, he's like, come get me I'm going to the top. And I was like, don't do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so he went up and I went to get him. I was like, what are you doing? And he just gave me a thumb. He's like, come back. Boop. And then when I came back, he just jumped off, gave me a potato. Oh, wow. So, so what? He had a single axe handle. So why did Vince want that spot? Uh, I think because everybody always every match he does it. So Vince was just like, "Don't do it tonight." Oh, uh, okay. Got it, got it. It. So I don't know. Maybe got he was getting ready to fire us until we didn't do it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. Makes sense. That was SmackDown. I think that was that a tag or a singles. It was tag. It was your last uh, WWE appearance uh, in two thousand. Jay Bradley. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Braddock is what his name at that time. Yeah. I guess that was his uh, name at that time? Yep, yep. Jesse and Festus is when. Yeah, Festus. I like him. He's a cool dude. <laughs> yeah. Cool guys. Yeah, Gallows. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Cool. So this was this was it for you. So what was what were your thoughts after this moment? Because this was this was it. You never know. I had pitched the idea to go back to the developmental for a little bit just to take a break off of TV. Uh, cause a lot of times people think like, Oh, I got to be on there every week. But you know, I was of the mentality of just let me be off of it for a while. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let them just forget about you for a little bit and then come back a little different or something new or find something different. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was it. Then they sent me home for a few months and then, and then that was it. No more yeah. TV there. Actually, yeah. is this when I went to FCW? Yep. With FCW. No, I think before that I went to FCW because I had a knee injury, but they had sent me there for a little bit, and I worked with Tyson Kidd mm -hmm. uh, and some others. Yeah, I think, yeah, when he was TJ Wilson at the yeah, end, FCW, right. I think, yeah, he, he beat you, I believe, uh, in FCW. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this was, uh, this was, this was it. I mean, uh, it was, it's one of those things that, it, to me, to me, it's it, a tape up one. Uh, I, I, might have been. I, I, I know this, Saran wrapped me to the dolly. Ah, uh, yeah. Networks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. This is this is. I know this was your last match on SmackDown in 2008, and I'm just, I, I'm wondering, like, why they. I don't know. It's, to me, it just seems like you had so much potential. I mean, you beat Flair, you pin Shawn Michaels. And then this, you know, wh wh why the transition within two years? Why from there to here? You never know. You never mm. know what they're doing. They switch plans. They switch ideas. But all you can do is whatever they ask you to do the best you yeah. can. Yeah. But I had some really good matches on SmackDown with, like, Jimmy Yang. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with him a few times. And some of that stuff we called in there. And mm -hmm. some of the, there were some times, too, where we had, like, six or seven minutes. And then we'd go out there, and they're like, okay, the match would start. They go, you got ten. So, oh, well, we got to fill in three more minutes. Yeah. And we'd add in stuff and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I worked punk on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And that I was see, a good uh, You did some ECW stuff too around that time. I think you did punk. Yeah, worked with him. Yeah. Well, I think got to did. work with Kane on SmackDown. That was cool. Yep. Yep. I remember that too. Yep. But, yeah. you know, I always, I always did the best I could to make the opponent look as good as they could mm -hmm. uh, for a few reasons. One, because I knew it would show up on their Titantron video which would mm. then give me more royalties. And two, it was like, you know, if you can make these guys look good, you know, then even when they're the top guys, they're going to want to work with you more because you make their job easier, you know, yeah. and they yeah. know that you're willing to put their stuff over. So they'll give you more, mm -hmm. you know, every time I work with Kane, he always gave me quite a bit mm. to get on him. Uh, oh, nice. because he knew that I was going to make him look good and I was going to put over every single thing that he did. Yeah, you know? that makes sense. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. 
and this was 16, our return. What's funny about this thing is wrestling has come so far in the sense where, uh, you know, you just go out and you call stuff like, you know, Flair and I just go out and here's our finish and they don't need to know too much. Mm -hmm. This, when we went out there, uh, they were like, okay, so what are you guys going to do? And we're like, okay, we'll spell his name. And then we're just going to, you know, we're going to beat up, beat him up. And they kept coming back to us like, well, what do you mean you're going to beat him up? How are you going to beat him up? And I'm like, I don't know. We're just going to mug him. And they're like, well, do you mean like one, two punches and then a kick? And I was like, I'm not going to tell you everything. Like, oh, I'm wow. going to change it up when I'm out there. I said, I'm just going to maul him yeah. until we get to where we need to go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we are of the mindset of just go out and feel it. Where mm -hmm. now it's more of a structured of, well, how many punches and how many kicks type? Like, and I, I, I just thought, I can't do that. Like, there's, yeah. you're not going to, because if I tell you that, I'm going to mess it up because I'm not even going to know what I told you when I get out there. I'm going to feel something totally different. Yeah. Especially working 10 years earlier with Flair and Dusty and Piper, yeah. <laughs> you know, just and, and Slaughter. And it's like, yeah, I mean, those, you know, people like that, I mean, you know, and Michaels. People like that are, are legends. And so, you know, they're, you got to feel it. You got to feel the energy. You got to feel the pulse of the crowd as opposed to every meticulous move. You know, it just. Exactly. Because yeah, then you know. if we do it, if we feel every, if we call every little move that we're going to do, we still have to listen to the crowd, even when we're mugging somebody. Because it yes. might go a little bit longer. It can go a little bit shorter. We just got to feel the crowd at their peak before we get them out of it. That's right. You know, we can't just call two punches and the crowd's not there yet that we'd have to do more mm -hmm. to get them where we need them to go. That's right. Uh, but now, what's interesting about this one is right after they told us, I didn't find out about this until maybe five days before. Mm -hmm. And they called and was like, can you be in San Diego? Okay. So I was like, Mondo, we're going to San Diego. He's like, yeah, I guess so. So we did. And that, those uniforms, they actually had like buckets of green clothing. And they were like... Nice. And actually, they had extras there, too. And they're like, we're going to send them out with you guys as, like, squad, too. And we were like, then we're not going to do it. Like, we're not doing it then. Wow. If you're going to send out these extras to be the squad, then just send them out to be the squad. Yeah. If you're going to send us out, then let it just me and Mondo. That's it. Mm -hmm. So we really had to, like, push a little bit for that. And so then they were like, okay, fine. We'll just send you two out. And it ended mm -hmm. up working fine. But uh, we weren't under contract or this entire time. We weren't under any contract. Everything was just, like, a week-by-week -week basis. Yeah. So it showed it, this shows a lot of trust that they have in us to give us live microphones. Yes. After not being on the show for eight years to just be mm -hmm. like, we're going to give them live microphones and have them beat up one of our stars. Yeah. Like, that's true. You know, we could have, we could have said whatever we wanted to <laughs> live yeah. on television. Right. And right. We really decided to just really beat the, beat the crap out of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what are they, like, what are you going to do? Fire us? You can't. Right. right exactly. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Vince, back in 2008, you really screwed me over. You know, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you could have said anything. You could have did anything. And we would always joke about that. Like, they, they're, they're so. Uh, like trusting us yeah. to do this not that we would do anything stupid but like the you know there you never know mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. and when we came to the back vince he said oh he said i'll see you at the pay-per-view and we were like okay i guess we're going to the pay-per-view next sunday nice nice yeah because i think it was uh, i think this is a three week three week run all together because uh, y'all had the tag, y'all in like in a tag uh, gauntlet or something like that of SmackDown, I think it was, or tag. Just no mercy. Uh, and then I worked them on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And then the week after that, no, we did a six man. And then we did a non title match where we pinned the cha tag champs. That's right. Yeah. And that's then the right. following week, we did a tag title match. And then the week after that, we did the 900th SmackDown. So it was like a good five, six weeks. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Building up to Survivor Series. Yep. 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 <clears throat> so, I mean, did they, so when they, so the last one, um, I think it was the 900th SmackDown. And yeah. Then, yeah. So when that, you know, still weren't on a contract, did they say, okay, this is it for y'all? I mean, this we don't have anything else, or how? How did they? How they every week it? it was just like, okay, we'll we'll let you know if we have anything. So uh, then you fly home and nothing, and then Thursday you get an email saying, here's your flight and your travel for next week. Ah, uh, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was literally a week by week basis. Yeah. But we knew we were coming back after we pinned the tag champs in a non title match. We were like, they're not gonna, they have to bring us back now. Right, right. And we were right. joking the whole time. 
uh, the following week because we knew there was going to be a tag title match. Mm-hmm. And I was telling the ref, like, when I put him in the sharpshooter, just make sure you ring the bell and, like, <laughs> like just BSing the whole way down. Like, yeah. we're going to totally shoot on these guys. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about Rhino, but we could definitely take Slater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, that's it, man. Good stuff. So, uh, what would you think? Did you enjoy it? <clears throat> yeah, it's cool. That's different. That's good, man. Good stuff. Yeah. You have time for another question or two? Mm-hmm. Cool. So hashtag Axe Kenny. Uh, Marissa is asking, do you watch wrestling to this day? I watch sometimes. Uh, now it's more so if someone asks me to watch their stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't really watch too much Raw or WWE, but it's more like the NXT group uh, or even some from AEW. They'll ask me to watch, hey, will you check this out? Or they'll send me a link. Can you watch this match? Mm-hmm. So I usually watch it, give them some critiques some feedback on things you know, to improve. Nice, nice. Elvis, who would you have? Who would you have wanted to work with that you didn't? Mm, probably Taker, Undertaker. I mean, I've worked with him in the ring, but never like a full match in front of a crowd. Mm, nice. Brian, uh, if it wasn't the Spirit Squad, what gimmick would you have liked to have done? Oh man, I don't know. Like, I like doing what I'm doing now. Uh, I do a lot of stuff with Beyond Wrestling as Ken Doan. And it's kind of like a Pillman-esque, crazy type character. I don't know. I just I feel it more now because maybe one, I don't take it as serious, and I don't mean it as serious like like it's a joke, but I take it like not as serious. Meaning like I get it. It's more of a show now, so I'm more into the show aspect of it. But right. I, I do take it serious in the sense where I can feel that when I come out, the people are believing in what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I just you, have to do so much less. So you do like. Um... So that so that gimmick is is in a I think it's be, beyond wrestling beyond wrestling now right you're doing yeah. some stuff there, um, interesting, that's a that, that seems like that's a, a big difference from you know what the squad world order and all and all that uh, but I guess you know just to continue to evolve your character and, you yeah know, it's pretty cool because it's like two complete different characters like uh, you know the squad characters very mm-hmm. comedy based. Yeah. and entertainment where the other one is very you know psychotic and crazy mm-hmm. but i don't know people like them both so yeah cool all right uh got enough time for one more sure all right last question guys uh, i gotta respect this time here uh mike is asking uh since you were trained by killer kowalski did you have a good relationship with hunter absolutely yeah and we talked about that actually when i was at the performance center mm-hmm. uh and Bloom, Coach Bloom, he was trained by Kowalski as well, the head coach down at the PC. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what they're preaching to these guys is similar, very, very similar principles as to what we were taught, Mm -hmm. you know, going through that system. When I went there, Hunter was already out, but I think Bloom was becoming Prince Albert. He was, he had just debuted on TV as that, as I was coming in. Mm -hmm. And Perry Saturn would always come back and forth from ECW when he was on and off the road as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we've always maintained that uh, relationship. And I remember too, when Kowalski passed away, I was with the company mm-hmm. and me and Hunter had talked about that for a little bit. Nice. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, that's it uh, for tonight, man. Uh, it was fun, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate I, it. Absolutely. Uh, let the listeners know where they can find you on social media, man. Ken Doan, just like you see on my name here, K-E-N-N-D-O-A-N-E. And that's at Twitter uh, and Instagram. Although awesome. I don't do too much of it. You know, I'm more of like a, I read like certain news pieces of it. I don't know. I'm not big on social media, but I do have occasional stuff. It's more like tidbits and some advice to help like wrestlers and whatnot. Yeah. <clears throat> I would, uh, I would say you got any dates coming up, but nobody does. So. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'll be looking up some PN news stuff. That's yes, absolutely, man. I could actually link y'all up. I, I, I still talk to Paul, so I can, I can make it really easy for you, man. So definitely. Uh, yeah. I'll link you up. Cool, man. Sounds good, man. Have a good night. Thanks. All right, Thanks appreciate it. All right. Bye. Y'all be good. Thanks. All right. Good stuff. Uh, Ken Doan. Uh, great, great show tonight. Um, good stuff uh, with Ken Doan. I hope you guys had a good time with Ken Doan. All right, y'all. How y'all feeling tonight? Um, PMP Nation, how is it? How is it? Hope y'all had a good time with that. Hope y'all had some fun with the the PNP photo shoot. I, th- I think that was fun too, man. I really gonna uh it just takes 
it just takes a lot of time. It just it just takes a lot of time <laughs> doing that stuff. Um, but this one this one wasn't too bad because uh, Kenny's, um, you know, his history is ten years um, younger than Delos. So for Delos, I had to do a longer you know span uh, with his than Ken's. But you know, I, I was I was really pleased that I was able to get a lot of. A lot of stuff with with Ken stuff, so that was that was pretty cool. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, all right, so how's everybody doing? PMP Nation, how's everybody doing? This is a the heels of WrestleMania thirty six on an empty arena, and uh, lots of uh, interesting stuff that uh, <laughs> we experienced with that. So, um, so yeah, man, good stuff, good stuff. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? What's up, Alonzo? What's up, Alonzo? Uh, cool, Kyle. I'm glad, man. Glad. I'm glad you think you have the. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad you like the photo shoot. Good stuff. Everybody, what else? Photo shoot. Uh, what else y'all got? What else? Uh, y'all like the photo shoot? I think I'm gonna keep doing this. Uh, I can't promise you every week because it is, I mean, like uh, the time frame, the timing is just a lot. Um, but I think I'll keep it up at least a couple times a month. I think I'll do at least a couple times a month. I do want to kind of brand this for PMP and make a photo shoot like a lot. When my time gets a little bit more open right now, I'm about to become a doctor. <laughs> so uh, my time is working hard while everybody else in the house is quarantined. Um, and becoming a doctor, work on my dissertation. So my schedule is, I mean, if this is the, the tip of the cup, my schedule is like this. It is filled to the brim. And it's so funny because podcasting is actually therapeutic for me because my schedule is so crazy that uh, I just, I like the, I like the podcast. So I enjoy, I enjoy PNP because it's really a, it's really cathartic for me. It's really a, a form of therapy to just talk wrestling with you all. So that's the reason why I have so much fun. Um, and also do, uh, I have another podcast, uh, a theology and apologetics podcast, Vision United with a Z. So go check that out. And so uh, I do just, uh, I have like stuff on my phone that I can make it look very presentable. Um, I prefer, I prefer the, you know, the, um, the cam setting with, with all the, bells and whistles but uh i got some some things on my phone that i can make it make it look presentable too and so i'll just be you know i'll be on break you know i'm a mental health therapist so that's a lot too that i'm continuing to pour and pour and pour into people and pour and pour and pour into people and you know provide therapy to people you know i'm a mental health specialist so um so i, I on a break i'll just you know just and drink some coffee and drink some water and just I'll have something in my mind and make a nice video about it. So uh, the, the catharsis of uh, videography and podcasting and, you know, video casting and all that stuff, broadcasting, it's uh, it's really cool. So especially when you're talking about stuff that you love to talk about. All right. Uh, P, uh, PMP Nation asks Chris questions. Elvis is asking, how do you have all these connections? Good question, Elvis. Um, you know what's so funny? Uh, speaking of connections, I had a really good conversation with. Um, uh, I had a really good conversation. Uh, I, I, I usually have. I really just keep conversations you know just this real good uh real good conversations uh and i just really keep um contact with people that i've interviewed on the show um and yeah i mean you know i had a i had a really good conversation on the phone just a random phone conversation before with bill after i mean just one of the most esteemed pro wrestling journalists and ever, you know, he's been doing this for a long, long time. So I was just sitting under the learning tree of Bill after. And, um, he said something really interesting to me. Um, as far as like, he, he, he put, he put my, my writing over. He, he, he really, he, he, uh, when I was submitting my, uh, pieces on sports illustrated, he called me, 
uh, somehow he emailed me, I think, and had, had me call him and, and we were talking for a while. We actually kept in contact for a while. I haven't talked to him in a while. I probably should give him a call. Um, but yeah, we, we were keeping contact and I would just sit in a learning tree and talk to him. And he was giving me some really good advice as far as just, um, how to, you know, continue to do what I'm doing, gave me some pointers, gave me a way to continue to, you know, keep good relationships with people. And I've really, you know, I, I love to, I love to learn. I love to teach, you know, te good teachers are good learners. And so I love to teach. That is my gift. My gift is teaching. So that's the reason why I ask questions all the time. I love when people ask me questions, as you can see, ask Chris. I love when people ask me questions and I love to ask questions. So uh, that's how it was. I was just sitting in the learning tree after and um, <clears throat> just getting advice from a lot of people and just really maintaining relationships with people uh, when at, at different times where they weren't, you know, necessarily like huge in WWE. And I was just, you know, I interviewed people and just kept relationship with them. So um, and it's funny because I would text somebody and you know they would lose my number or whatever and i would say this is you know chris featherstone from pancakes and power slams and they'll be like oh yeah blah, blah, blah. you know current wwe people you know um nicknames and i'm like oh yeah yeah what's up man and we would just go back and forth and you know it was just it's relational you know and i and i think it's one of those things that i maintain them because i, I maintain a good relationship with people um because i'm a very relational person so it's fun, man. Just continue the relationships. I have a huge Rolodex of, of wrestlers um, that I'll just randomly text, you know, how you doing? Because a lot of wrestlers want that stuff, man. They're so used to like the fame and the fortune and stuff like that. And I was really, I was recently thinking about this, about a lot of the reason why a lot of comedians are depressed and, you know, are suicidal you know, I mean, like Robin Williams and uh, Chris Farley, my all time favorite actor was uh, Chris Farley. You know, he basically died, you know, uh, uh, just in a very sad state. You know, I mean, just really addicted to alcohol and drugs and things like that. And and, it, you know, it's just it, it's sad because a lot of those people, they give so much to people, but they don't have people pour back into them with encouragement. And wrestlers are like that too, man. I've had some really deep conversations with wrestlers and um, cause I'm a certified life coach and I've had some really deep conversations with wrestlers, um, e even a lot from a spiritual, from a, from a, a religious standpoint too. Cause as many of you know, I'm a very, very strong Christian. I'm, I'm in ministry. And so they, they, lo they love that stuff. They love those conversations of people just, um, not really coming to them from a standpoint of I'm a fan, but like we're just peer to peer, man. You know, good stuff. Uh, I'm gonna put Ken Anderson over. He's you know he's one of the people I can just talk to. You know, we can just chat. You know, like uh, um, you know he, I'm a Christian. He's an atheist, and uh, and uh, we we've had some some good chats back and forth uh, about uh, religion. Um, that's uh, and I, and I'm and I'm and he's. He's a cool dude, man. And I'm not afraid, you know, oh, the mighty Ken Anderson. I'm not afraid to, you know, push push buttons, you know, when it comes to those conversations. Cause I love talking theology and apologetics. And I'll I'll push I'll I'll push back hard, you know, about about you know some things and we'll have friendly, friendly uh debates about it. And you know, they like that stuff, you know. So it's cool, man. I, I really enjoy this field and i really enjoy maintaining relationships with uh with with people all right uh what else i got what else i got i think you asked this before elvis will you become a raiders fan now that we have marcus uh no uh, again why do you keep asking this question i am a tennessee titans fan i will i tennessee titans for full life, full life, Tennessee Titans, full life. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, Bill After is a really, really cool dude. Really, really cool dude. Um, favorite and least favorite of Mania. Uh, we'll talk about that. Kyle, you win this week. You win the 
steal the headline. So congratulations to Kyle. You win the steal the headline. Uh, Brandon, I'll give you a co a co uh, co winner because uh, we're going to talk about WrestleMania 36, as y'all probably already know. So we want to jump into WrestleMania um, WrestleMania 6 36. Um, getting the insights on the individual matches is neat. Cool, Brian. I'm glad you enjoy it, man. I think I'm gonna do I'm do a lot more into that because I think it was it's it's been really fun. It's been been really fun. I I enjoy it. Cool. All right, call. All right, y'all. Um, so you ready? Y'all ready to jump into it? Um, good questions. Good ask, Chris. Questions. Uh, since Sting is your all-time favorite wrestler. As you can see with my current shirt, Stinger. Since Sting is your all-time favorite wrestler, what's your favorite match of his career? Uh, has been 30 years ago. It is now. Great American Bash, 1990. First time he won the WCW Heavyweight Championship, NWA uh, Heavyweight Championship against La Nature Boy, Ric Flair, McMahon. Um, Robbie's you, you've interviewed many wrestlers. So if you could name three wrestlers that are no longer here, you want to interview, who would they be? Great question, Robbie. Great question. I love that question. Yeah. I've interviewed, um, I have a check, um, well over 150, uh, people. Um, that's a really good question. Uh, ultimate warrior. Ultimate Warrior um, is controversial <laughs> as he was. Uh, I would have uh, really enjoyed having a conversation with uh, the Ultimate, the Ultimate Warrior. Um, Dust the Ruth, baby. Oh yeah, Dust the Ruth. Uh, my second all-time favorite. Dust the baby for sure. Um. Warrior, Dusty, and um, Warrior, Dusty. I, I mean, I, I guess I'd say Piper. Yeah, I think that's pretty solid. Or oh, the Macho Man Randy Savage, yeah. Chris Featherstone, the Pancakes and Power Slam Show, cup of coffee, yeah. Man, freak out, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Randy Savage would have been, uh, would have been pretty good. Um, all right, people. Uh. I've had I've had Ken Anderson. I, we'll do a photo. We'll do a shoot. He was supposed to come on last week with D'Lo, but he's uh, got real sick. So yeah, Ken Anderson is. Uh, I think he's been on the show around the most. I know Marty Elias. I think he's up there as far as like who's been on the show the most. I think Ken Anderson has been on the show six times. So this is the eighth year of the show. Um, let's see. I think he's been on six times, either five or six times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, it's a lot here. So let me see. Yeah. I think like six times. It's It's been quite a bit. Um, let me see. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to look at my list of, um, people that has been, that have been on the show. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so episode, so he's been on five times. Episode 211, that was in 2016. Episode 236, so 20, uh, what, 25 weeks later. So that's, what, four months later. 
right? A little over four months later. Episode 263, both of them was with Davari. It was Ken Anderson and Sean Davari for 236 and 263. And then episode 303 and episode 358. Um, so he's been on five times. Big shout out. Ken Anderson five times. He's a part of the five timers club. Uh, Marty Elias has been on the show. Um, four, five, seven times. 241, 275, 280, 296, 326, 336, and 407. Uh, JTG is up there. I think Marty Elias is, has number one. So Ken Anderson's five, uh, Marty Elias seven, JTG four, four times. Uh, I had him on 150, 212, 285, and 342. Um, who else is up there? Sean Davari. Um, John Devari four times, Lance Archer, um, four times, shout out to Lance, four timers club. Yeah, I think there's been, there's been other people. Uh, I usually do, usually one person do like two or three times um sometimes once but in down this is his fourth time uh 227 386 349 and today so this is his fourth time cool man this that's a uh, good stuff good stuff so shout out to marty elias seven times ken anderson five times sean Devari four times JTG four times. Um, and Lance Archer four times. Shout out to shout out to them. Uh good stuff. Black Bart too. How many times has Black Bart been on the show now? Nice. <laughs> uh Six, three fifty one, three sixty one, three seventy four, three ninety four, and four hundred two. So, uh, and four hundred nine. Oh, nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six times. Shout out to Black Bart, six time club. Nice. He's a part of the five timers club. Good stuff. I have not. Uh, I have interviewed Jay Lethal. Yes, I, I interviewed Jay Lethal um, on a conference call and also three years ago. Episode 254 was Jay Lethal. Um, I did. I've not interviewed Ahmed Johnson, so uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, yes, I would like to interview Bruno. You guys are having some really, really good questions. I love these questions. Um. At the present, with the world in a black place, are you putting focus on prayer? Of course, Mike. You, you already know that, man. I, fo I focus on prayer whether <laughs> whether the times are good or bad, for sure. Uh, yeah, I was thinking Andre Kyle. He was like, he definitely would have been one of my one of my choices. Um, ever see a big surprise interest debut similar to AJ Styles in a future Royal Rumble match? Uh, sure. I mean... Yeah, yeah, why not? Um, I really don't know who's out in the market now that would be a surprise that it's never been there other than Kazuchika Okada or Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega was in D Deep South, but Kenny Omega's with AEW. Kazuchika Okada, that would probably be... But I don't want Okada in WWE, though. I, I just I don't want Okada in WWE. Uh, he's still young. He's still so huge. Tanahashi would be pretty cool, but I don't see them doing 
much of anything with Tanahashi. I, I really don't because Shinsuke Nakamura was a star in Japan. And uh, unfortunately, you know where he is nowadays, unfortunately. Good questions, guys. Um, we will be talking about this. We'll be talking about this, Michael. Cool. All right. So let's get into. Uh, no, I've not interviewed any of the McMahons. Uh, almost hopped on a conference call with Triple H. Um, but uh, I think I was at work or or was working at that time, so I didn't. Um, oh, absolutely, it'd been great to interview Eddie. Absolutely. All right, so let's do. Let's go. Let's do some. Let's do some headlines. All right, y'all ready? Headlines. Here we go. All right. Let's re- let's review WrestleMania thirty six. Let's re- review WrestleMania thirty six. Um. What y'all think? What y'all think of WrestleMania 36? Um, pretty, pretty fun. Pretty fun. Um, my thoughts on WrestleMania 36. Let me bring up the card again, so this I, I can have a refresher of um how it was. Let me have a a refresher. How WrestleMania 36 was. Um, let me bring over the week. This week is uh, we're going to actually um, we're going to do early predictions for uh, 37. Early predictions for 37, and also um, what are your thoughts on the two night? Personally, I didn't like the two night. I I, I think it was really good. Now, I, mean, I think it was really good for this year, um, but uh, I, don't, I, I hope they don't do that again. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope they don't do that again. But it was good for this year, though, based on the circumstances. Totally fine with it. Um, yeah, yeah. What grade would y'all give it? Night one and night two. Night one, I say B minus. Night two, C minus. And only C minus because of Drew winning. Drew made it from a more of a D plus to a C minus. Now I think I probably do solid C because I was really happy that Drew won, although it was in front of nobody. Um, yeah, C and B minus. B minus night one, C night two. Um, yeah, average. Yeah, yeah. Love the boneyard match. Um, let me bring up the card. Let me bring up the card. Let's see. Um, but yeah, I don't I hope they don't do two nights again. Um, especially when I'm when I'm there doing doing media. I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to do media for two straight nights of WrestleMania. First of all, it would take my excitement away from it. Um, so I wouldn't enjoy it as much. So yeah, I mean, you kind of doing media, it, you kind of lead yourself up to that night. You lead all the weekend festivities is set up for Sunday, especially. I mean, it's just not a way the WWE could do it because Thursday's Hall of Fame, Friday's SmackDown, Saturday's Takeover, and then Sunday's Mania. So they wouldn't be able to do it two nights, anyways. All right, so. Nights one. Um, Cesaro beating Gulak. That's cool. Uh, it was a short match. He did the airplane spin on his neck. It was really interesting. Yeah, I'm glad he got. A, I'm glad he picked up a win. Um, so I'm totally, totally cool with that. Bliss and Cross defeating Kabuki Warriors. This makes sense because uh, I knew some things were going on with Kari Sane uh, and Oscar. Um, this this kind of branches her off to be her own, you know, kind of 
get back into the singles thing, although they're still plugging the Kabuki Warriors as a team. I really hope, I mean, just Asuka singles, uh, Asuka tag team heel, even singles heel, it's just not cutting it for me. Like her, like her, her characters become boring. You know, it's like, and I was a huge Oscar fan, huge, uh, but it's kind of blah. Uh, it's just a really blah type of type of angle going on with uh, with Oscar. Um, Elias defeating Corbin was a bathroom match. <laughs> Honestly, uh, wasn't too much. I mean, I'm glad Elias got a win because. He doesn't have many good WrestleMania uh, moments. So um, two straight years, he got beat up by Cena. <laughs> so 34 and 35, he got beat up by John Cena. Um, Lynch defeating Baszler was a bit of a surprise because, you know, uh, Becky was supposed to be taking some time off, rumored. Um, but, you know, like I said on the live show, uh, by the way, thanks for everybody. Thanks to everybody who jumped on the live show for both nights. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I really enjoyed it with the crew. Um, yeah. So, like I said, on the on the uh, on the live stream, the watch party, everybody is taking time off. So, um, you know, I guess it really didn't matter. Uh, Zayn defeating uh, Daniel Bryan clean. That was a bit of a surprise. Uh, it, it really seems like Daniel Bryan is really at this moment now. I, it's like, is he on his way out? Like, is he about to retire or something like that? Because it really seems as if uh, he's just really spending a lot of time putting people over nowadays. It really just seems like that's what he's doing. It's just uh, putting people over. And very interesting because to me, Zane, he doesn't have a lot of steam behind him right now. So since he beat him clean, you know, who would be a viable option next for um, for Zane? Personally, I would be cool with Kofi because right now you can have the New Day feud with Sammy and Shinsuke and Cesaro. Uh, and then, you know, that's it'll be a good spot for Xavier Woods when he comes back to three on three and you can have Kofi or even Big E. Honestly, I would be even, I I'd be happy with Big E, um, you know, winning the Intercontinental Championship again, feuding with uh, Sami Zayn. I'd, I'd be great. I, I think that'd be fantastic. Uh, Morrison winning. Uh, that was a bit of a surprise uh, because they've, I mean, they've been on a roll <laughs> as far as Morrison. I mean, beating the New Day, winning at Saudi and then winning at mania. So, I mean, it really seems like they're spending a lot of time, uh, <laughs> putting Morrison over and, uh, making him happy. Uh, Owens and Zane, uh, Owens and Rollins was a good match. I enjoyed that match. Actually. Um, that was one of the matches that kept my attention. Uh, love Strowman, Strowman and Goldberg. Uh, interesting. Uh, so there's some rumors going around that uh, Goldberg had a, uh, a backstage altercation with uh, Vince McMahon because he was upset that Roman Reigns was um, the guy he was supposed to, you know, feud with and put over. So this is a this is a rumor. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm buying this, but this is a rumor. Not verifying this whatsoever, so don't go around the dirt sheet saying Chris Featherstone of Pancakes and Power Slams said this. When things are reported from me, I want to make sure if I say that it's true, it's true, it's authentic. All the stuff that's been reported, I authentic I authenticate it through source and source or speaking to that person directly. So this is a rumor, a rumor that I cannot verify. I have not verified. But for conversational purposes, uh, the rumor is that Goldberg did get into an altercation with Vince McMahon because he thought that Vince McMahon should have allowed him to because he pitched staying a couple a couple more dates leading up to uh, SummerSlam, dropping the title to Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. Now I like that Strowman won. Um, Strowman didn't have a lot of steam on him, and Goldberg felt that too. Which, honestly, I 
I can advocate Goldberg's point on this because I, I want I, I was cool with Strowman winning. I, I, I like that he won the match, but for the sake of protecting yourself, especially the legends, and I've interviewed Goldberg, and he's he said the same is this very same thing as far as just making sure that he's protected. Shawn Michaels has said this too. The reason why he's not, you know, didn't go against AJ Styles. Like AJ Styles going over Shawn Michaels, really, what does it prove? You know, and, and I agree with it. I, I agree with that mentality. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. So it, it's one of those things that if uh, Goldberg came back, you know, he's, he's, he said that, you know, rumored he, he stayed, he, he, he stayed past Saudi to put over Roman Reigns and Vince switch, you know, flip the switch. So, I mean, I, I, I have, I honestly side with Goldberg on that. I, 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 I'm, I'm happy Braun won, but I, I get Goldberg's point too. So Evan tech proud. Hey, yo, what are your thoughts? On hey, yo, did I? See, I can't see nothing. I got my glasses on. Did I just see WrestleMania with no crowd? Yes, WrestleMania with no crowd. Oh man, I uh, was going on fast. Uh, PNP Nation. Oh man, what did we watch with the, the family? I keep calling the family five five front front house. Yeah, and uh, you know. Boneyard match, eight hours of theatrics. Shout out to Matt Hardy because you know they was inspired by him. I loved the Boneyard match though. Like that, that was yeah. probably my favorite. Other than I, I, night one was good too. I mean, I liked, I liked night night one. It was a solid night, night one. Was good. Yeah, I mean night I, two. The uh, bone night two was average to below average at best. Yeah. <laughs> at at best. Um, but night one was really good. I mean, they should have really flipped it. They should have flipped night one and night two because, and I was saying this on uh, the um, the watch party, I said, you know what? This would be a perfect way to, like, end Taker's career. Like, this was perfect. Like, he, he kind of went back to ABA. Without, you know, I'm glad he kept the hair. I don't like when Taker cuts his hair. Cause you know you have to flip yeah, your hair yeah. back and do the rest in peace and all that. I don't like when he cuts his hair, but he still had the yeah, long Mohawk. hair. Yeah, mohawk. What was that? Twenty nine. Uh, Uncle Fester. Yeah, Uncle that was Fester. yeah. I was thirty. That was uh, Lesnar. Thirty. Uh, um, yeah, Uncle Fester Taker. That's what I called him. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it. Still had the hair. You know, had the had the bandana on. Was more of an eight. Had the ABA look to him. Came in the bike. Um. The Boneyard match was very well put together, very well choreographed, very well produced, told a story, made sense. Kurt Angle was actually the person who came up with the feud between Taker and Styles, which was really interesting. Makes <clears throat> perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and it definitely seems as if and it makes me wonder if. If if WrestleMania was actually live, oh uh, man, we know it would. This right here wouldn't have been Look, near, nowhere near as exciting as get, on your match. We we can praise the coronavirus, KKB nineteen. One thing we got to see the Boneyard match and the uh, Fire Firefly Funhouse. What's going on, guys? Oh, that was trash. And we know. We, we, <laughs> We, I thought it was funny too. Yeah, I was. Joke that weekend I had, man. I was in tears for all different reasons. Sitting in, in my office, in laughing at you. Know. It didn't make sense to me at all. I mean, I understand like they were giving him like, Hollywood Hogan type of thing. Hollywood. Hollywood, yeah, I get it. But Bischoff said that I got fired in October, and uh, you know, I'm in the main event. Uh, <laughs> Russell Mania was funny how that is. That was that was pretty funny that he said that, he said that on, on uh, IG or Twitter yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah. You know, the, the Boneyard, great. You know, we wouldn't have saw that in Tampa. No, no. And that's, and that's interesting. You would not see any of that in Tampa. No, we wouldn't have. And I think what would have been pretty cool is that what would have been cool is that they would have done uh 
a boneyard match still, and we all would have been watching on like the big screens if they if they did that. Yeah. Like, I think that would have been cool if they did that because the boneyard match was that was a perfect way to use Taker. I mean, that was a perfect yeah. way to use Taker. Yeah, I definitely, yeah. I definitely didn't want to see it just a regular match between the two. Definitely didn't want to see that. Uh, but this right here and it main event it. It was perfect to me. It was yeah, it was, it was a good way. And then and then when Mania left, Mania went off. Taker rode off to the sunset. It and we'll ever see Taker again. That's the no. way. <laughs> <laughs> that is the perfect yeah. way to, to you, you know you know you you know how 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 detailed we are as fans. You know what I thought about AJ Hand? I was just thinking about Luger. Remember that Stinger? Yeah. Stinger. Go home running this stop woman to see it was a board game. Yeah. <laughs> board games. Yeah. Now, it, uh, it, yeah, I think Sting uh the, what, the fake Sting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a crap on the leaguer. But now I mean AJ, you know, good buddy of mine. We still text. I text him afterwards and maybe it was a great man taking this talking and gallows and the druids. He had the druids come after him and mm-hmm. that was great stuff. It, Loved it. And yeah. the thing is with Mania. You think it gave Anderson the Gallows a spot too. Yeah, Anderson the Gallows have happened. Yeah, so right. The uh, the the, the uh, construction truck, the digger, the dirt digger, what we call that, the plow. Mm-hmm. So it, it's you know the thing is, and shout out to you know our boy Drew. You think of Mania thirty six. Sadly, you do not think about you winning the title. That's true. Unfortunately, it's like oh the Boneyard match with, with a Firefly Funhouse. Mm-hmm. The, the ladder match was good. I think Charlotte showed a, uh, that match was a, a great story. It just was too much yelling and screaming. And I'm like, what, what, what the hell? Yeah, what it was a 20 minute hell? match. It was it was interesting. It was it was long. It was a long match. Good match. Uh, just... And we'll talk about why there's some conflicting reports of why Rhea lost. I was not happy that Rhea lost. Daddy's girl. Not happy. Not happy at all. At all. At all. At all. Um, we'll talk about that here in a bit. Um, Daddy's girl. You know Daddy's girl had to win. Well, it, it, I can understand. Based on the reports that's going on, I understand why they made the switch. I don't think it was necessary for Charlotte. I think Charlotte should have been there to put Rhea over. I think Rhea Ripley, Rhea Ripley should have went over. And I think that Bianca Belair, I'm glad that she came up, but I think she should have. It was a. It's weird to have her come. Bianca Belair is an absolute star. She's one of my favorite wrestlers in NXT uh, and, and all of WWE. Period. Now, her coming to Raw, it makes it, it was a good way, and I'm glad that she's a babyface again. She needs to be a babyface to me. I've said this on the show. She needs to be a babyface. I'm glad that she is. Make her a star. Now. Charlotte NXT champ. The plans are for her to do Raw and NXT still. So, but to me, Bianca Belair is the perfect person to put in that slot to feud against Charlotte, uh, especially with Rhea being uh, gone, you know, for a while. It doesn't make sense that the the baby faces on NXT aren't that strong. You know, I mean, you got Tegan yeah. Knox, Tegan Knox, Candice LeRae. Uh, Mia uh, Yim, and that's really your that's it. basis. I mean, EO's a heel, they're probably Turner because a lot of people are, are, are hearing her, but she's still a heel as of now. And plus, EO versus Charlotte, eh, oh, eh, that's the thing, yeah. Oh, uh, no, so, um, yeah, all right, so real quick, the rest of Mania, um. Alistair Black, Lashley, that was pointless. I did like Lashley's gear. Good match. Yeah, like the Lashley. pants. I, I really love the pants. Gear. And they should just turn him baby face. And I, and I think with with Lana, the whole thing, it, it seems like a split is coming, but I really hope that they turn that guy baby face, man. I really want to see. I've said this on the show many times. I want to see Lashley Lesnar. People are asking me, yeah, we all do. what do I think? Uh, you know, who's going to win the Royal Rumble? 
I want Bobby Lashley to win the Royal Rumble next year. I want Lesnar to have uh, a title beforehand because it's better for the faces to chase the heels going into WrestleMania. And I think that Lesnar winning the title again before next year, Royal Rumble or something like that makes makes perfect sense. And Lesnar Lesnar for the title. Because just think about <laughs> We didn't have Tampa, and there's some rumors that the 22 is going to have um, Tampa. Tampa may be going to uh, 2022 to, uh, to 38. So at 37 in L.A., you can have Roman Reigns versus The Rock and Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. Like this, I mean, that right there screams Marquis. And Triple H against Shane McMahon. Oh, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, no, thank you. I'm, I'm cool. With trip never comes back. I'm actually yeah. cool. Taker never comes back either. Um, um so yeah, we'll, 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 we'll be, we'll be predicting. We'll be, the flavor of the week is early predictions of the WrestleMania 37 card. All right. I'm going to bring out a notebook. I'm yeah. going to bring out a notepad. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to make it happen with the, with the yeah. WrestleMania 37 card. Lastly, um, lastly, pants. Love him. Good hard hitting hard hitting match. Uh this, yeah, it was. this DLC it was pointless. Like yeah. I'm glad last he had a had a mania match. But yep. uh, I liked Otis Ziggler. I like that story. And plus, man, Otis, I mean I was saying this on a, on the watch party. Otis had a singles storyline spot win at Mania. That's huge, man. That's huge. Yeah. Um Edge and Orton was way too long for me. Was- I'm gonna tell you, I was, I was, I literally was laughing so hard. I know going to watch party, and remember, I was like, "What is this? Like backstage assault?" Yeah, it was, it was just way too long. Cause it was like the like WCW backstage assault, but with Edge and Orton. Remember the video game? Yeah, it was, I it was a random sports coat. It was <laughs> yeah. the corridor. The catering, the boardroom, the closet, yeah, it on was top just, of the truck. I, I remember that when I was playing. Uh, oh, what was I playing? I think I was playing. Uh, I think it does that. It does that. No mercy. You can, you can go backstage and uh, go to the uh, loading dock and uh, the, uh, the locker room and all that. And it just felt like that. It was just long, man. I mean, thirty-three I, minutes, man. I'm yeah, it was like, it. yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it, it, it racked up it was thirty six minutes and thirty five seconds. So that I mean, just yeah, it was too long. I mean, obviously they were trying to kill time, but I was just like, the first, the first night was three hours, the second night was three and a half hours. I mean, just shave fifteen minutes of that match, you know what I mean, and you would have been cool. Um, yeah, man, look, but but you. Really, Triple H went to Orton and was like, you know, uh, I can't have my match. Uh, so you gotta take my place. Uh yeah. Look, you could you could multiply both world title matches times three, and it still wouldn't be as long as that one match. Strowman and Goldberg was two minutes and ten seconds. Drew and uh Drew and Lesnar was four thirty-five. So that's so six basically minutes and and forty-five seconds. It takes longer to you get a couple of needles together, then the yeah. world title matches. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So that's, that's it. So that's uh, 33 minutes. Over, right? over five times, about five times as long. I kept <laughs> I kept looking up at, at my TV. I'm like, they here, they are. Like, this match isn't over yet. Mm-hmm. And Ed says crying to tears. I'm like, yeah. I, oh, okay. What was worse? Was it the latter? Was it the. Last man stand, standing match, Edge or Orton, or would you say Batista and Triple H last year? I actually of them, thought Batista and Triple H was uh, an okay match. I do think it was long, but I, I was actually into it. I, I was just was in not into Edge or Orton. I just, uh, I just. You know what was weird is it was the reverse. Edge and Orton had a great build up, but the match didn't live up. Mm-hmm. But Rollins and Owens build up was whack, but that match was actually <laughs> could have cool was actually pretty well. Yeah, who would have thought that match would be better than Edge yep, of Orton? Yep, I agree. 
Uh, real quick, uh, who think this mystery person is working with Sonya to hurt Mandy? Well, it seemed like it seemed like the other way around, though. It seemed like the mystery person was actually trying to hurt Sonya because that was the reason why, um, you know, he revealed the, you know, footage. So it seems like that's uh, based on the symbol. It seems like it's Mustafa Ali. Um, so is um, he still hanging out at bus stops. Yeah, he's they're, they're <laughs> like trying, they keep trying to have him do something. I don't know what this is for, but if he if it is kind of like a baby face, kind of like a GTV baby face type of thing, it could be could be interesting. Um, let's see, Street Profits against Garza in theory. That was just uh, that was pointless, absolutely. You know what was better than that match? And then Raw, the segment was almost an hour. I mean, like you, oh, yeah, it was three different segments in one match. I mean, what a way to debut Bianca Belair! What a terrible way to to, uh, debut Bianca Belair. You do the tag rematch. Why in the world are they having a rematch? Because they lost cleanly. And so why would you give them another title shot if they lost their WrestleMania cleanly? That was the first mistake. Yeah. And then somehow that's a DQ. That leads to Selena Vega attacking them and then Bianca coming out again. And then that becomes a singles match. And then they call it a DQ because two of the people, two of the team – uh, was fighting in the ring, so they called that a DQ, which switched to a six man. It was just way too long. It was raw, was one of the worst raws I've ever seen in my life. I mean, just hands down, it was an absolute F to me. Well, and it was it? like for the, for the raw, the raw of the WrestleMania is one of the most hype raws, right? You know, what I mean, because you have everybody, you, you really have the entire world, you know, what I mean, at raw because. A lot of people are still staying around from, from overseas. They usually leave on, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday. And so you literally have the mania crowd, you know, yeah, so right. at, you know, at, at the Raw of the Mania. But this one, <clears throat> I mean, it was huge. It, it was just oh. ridiculously awful, Raw was. It was bad. Yeah. It, it, was, was it, would you put it as bad as the early rolls from ninety four. Um, nineteen ninety four when they were rolls. I I do because the expectation wasn't yeah. as I mean because you were dealing with genres and stuff. You were like the point was yeah. to put people over. You know what I mean to make people look like stars. But I mean like the tag match and I mean the the point yeah. was to make Bianca Belair look good, but it really didn't. It was I mean it was a good match, match was like yeah. a classic Dragon Ball Z. Fight, it was yeah. like on and on, but it makes sense because they're singing, you know. But it was yeah. like, why is that pretty full set? I'm half asleep, yeah. I'm I'm working, you know, I'm at, at my office sitting there, like trying to watch Raw on calls, like this match, yeah, it was still horrible. on. Why, yeah, horrible. Uh, 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 Cruise and lastly, I believe I've said that before. I, I want to, I, I want to see that. Um, as baby faces, though, uh, I don't want to see Miss Hills because I don't think it'll have a long shelf life if that's the case. I think <clears throat> my man Teddy Long should manage Lashley. Lashley needs a mouthpiece. Lashley is a face. Somebody got to talk for Lashley. As we know from talking to him, he's soft spoken. He's cool. Yeah, he does not need to talk. I don't think Teddy Long will fit in this day and age. I think uh Slick. I, think, I think Abraham Washington would be good. Yeah, my man Abraham Washington. I'll send him yeah. a second. But I don't think he should be a heel though. I think I don't think Lashley should be a heel, honestly. No. Be a baby face. Uh all right, real quick. Uh what else? Bailey retaining was actually a surprise. Yeah. I was like, but I'm actually I didn't want I like Bailey. I mean, Bailey was one of my favorites at one point. You know, She's still poor job with her uh, for a long time, actually. Um, it's funny because I said this in a watch party. I wanted Tamina to win just because, you know, she's been, Tamina. Yeah, she's been under for so long, man. But guess what happens? She gets eliminated first. Uh, par for the course when it comes to <laughs> Tamina. You know why? It's because, you know, she's still sadly, she's always going to get yeah, because yeah. her daddy, and, you know, yeah. I was good friends with Snooker. 
That's my man, but she's Big still going to cloud, man. Yeah, dark cloud. <clears throat> yep. Um, and then Naomi is who I want to really, but uh, and when Bailey Bailey won, I was like, yeah, but I'm uh, glad that they decided to win, have her win other than Lacey Evans. Yeah. But it seemed like they may do Bailey Sasha, but I don't want again for like the 80th time. Exactly from. again, and for one and for two, um, are they going to turn Bailey the face? Because I want I don't want Sasha to be baby face again. Make Sasha heal. She's, she's, she's a better heel. heel. Yeah. So but then that means then that means we gotta go back to the Illuminati Bailey buddy. You don't, you don't like whatever you do things creep me out. The Bailey buddies. We don't need those. Bailey yeah, don't do like the Bailey baby. buddies. You don't have to do that. Uh, you can you can uh, you can still make it work with her being a baby face with a with an edge. Uh, Wyatt and Cena. T- yeah, t- that was just it was too hokey for me. It was just it was just. It, 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 it was funny it. though. It was funny though. First time I watched it, I was like, "Oh, this is trash." The second time I watched it, I was like, "This is still bad." It's a little better than the first time, but bad. Bad. I, I look at it like this: give Cena credit because Cena with you all of the Dragon Ball Z reference, all of the forms like Freeza and so yeah, prototype Cena with them span. You know, we joke about that all the time. The colorful spandex pants and. It was good to see that. It was good to see the Saturday Night's main event stuff and Bray. You know, Vince is com- Vince commentating. I thought that that stuff was funny, but for but after that, it was sitting there like that. You know, we were talking doing other watch. I was like, what? What are we? What is going on? It was just too long. It was just too convoluted to me. It just and to me, it really didn't put Bray over. Like I just really wished that he would have beat John Cena. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't even a match. Like he was his own ref in this theory, in, in this you know cinematography, and you could tell it just it seemed like it wasn't a third. It seemed like it was a third party production company with the Boneyard match. It it seemed like it was WWE, WWE with, yeah. with with you know the Firefly Fun House. You could tell the difference. You could that's some pressure. Yeah, that's yeah, like exactly. That. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's good S pal. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, <laughs> you gotta do the Vince laugh. <laughs> right, 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 whatever. Do. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see. So, let me see real quick. Um, I think it would have been better to debut Bianca Belair as a surprise opponent of Bailey's, or if she could have done some kind of open challenge since she claims no one can touch her. Uh, I, I like her as a baby face, uh, but they're doing the stick with your spouse type of thing now, so. You know, Ooh, her being her being on raw it makes sense. So she looks better with all that makeup though. With without you said her with yeah. Did you see the uh without did you see the uh what was it? The the they were doing the, the women shoot. thing, the photo, yep. yeah. She mm-hmm. she's she's good looking, she looks better with all that. Yeah, she said she prefers not to. Have. I listen. I looked at. The, I listened to the interview actually. Um, uh, Carmella actually did a, like a like a sit down circle. Yeah, Carmella's and, too. and <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? He got to do that again. Um. So Yes. Yes to Bianca though. Um. But they were talking about like EO says that she feels like naked without it. Uh, uh oh, Ruby Riot said that you know she feels weird without it too. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, going deep. Yeah, um, Bianca had a really natural look to her. So I, uh, Bianca looks good. Yeah, Carmella uh, looks good. Dana Brooke actually didn't look too bad. Actually, it wasn't, it wasn't Dana Brooke. Uh, yeah, D- Dana. It no, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Sasha uh, needs it. I've seen Sasha face to face. All you see is this. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. So, uh, Drew and Brock. You know, of course, I was super happy that Drew won. I I went the right. I lied to you now. I went to wipe my eye, Mm. and I looked up, and you had the belt. What the hell? I'm like Claymore kick F five. I literally wiped my eye. He has the belt. I yeah. have to rewind it. Like, are you serious? Yeah. Um, I, I feel so bad for you. I know that's your boy. 
I haven't seen uh seen his Instagram after the match. I will look at it. Um Mike saying Dream was supposed to debut on Monday, but Corona canceled it. I'm glad I'm glad he didn't debut. He should win the NXT championship before he debuts. That's the reason why I think Bianca shouldn't have debuted yet. I think she should have won the NXT women's championship first. Um, all right. So let's jump real quick uh, because I do want to get these <clears throat> this card together. Uh, next is um, so WWE's doing another set of tapings due to COVID nineteen. <clears throat> so they're changing they're changing ropes and doing the extra like precaution stuff. Um, and so this lockdown, I mean, with the stay at home, is supposed to be um, until April the. Now, now April 9th initially, and then I think it's supposed, and then they changed it to April 30th as far as like essentials. Uh, I think April 30th is like the 10 person restriction, and then each state has their own particular um, uh-huh. at home. Uh-huh. I know Virginia, like I said, June 10th. I know here in Ohio, I believe it's until April 30th as far as mm-hmm. stay at home. So, uh, it's it's going to be interesting because I mean there's all types of stuff. I mean people saying WWE's trying to get some indisclosed, you know, crazy location uh, that no one knows about, like, like UFC's doing. Yeah, um, and then but it, it is going to be at the PC, and then um, they're going to do precautions things, and they're going to have waves of matches. So essentially, uh, everybody's going to have their own particular match. Um, and, and they're going to be the only person there in the PC. So, so they're making precautions, but this is a really crazy time and it really is a, a crazy, crazy time. And, and, and this it, it's still, we've, ex- we've experienced this for three weeks and it still doesn't feel the same, you know, with, without a crowd. <clears throat> it really, it really doesn't. It doesn't, man. Yeah. Like why am I saying at WrestleMania, no WrestleMania sign and no fireworks. Yeah. Goldberg coming out, coming out the janitor's closet. He, he did the best they could do right. is to make that interest real. He probably had like absolutely nothing, like beside him. It was probably wall, and he right. probably had like it's nothing like, behind some, him too. Some, like it was some kind of claustrophobic, like really. right. It's a, it's a like fake wall, <laughs> right? They're the security guards. They did two steps and stopped. That's how you yeah, know yeah, right. it is. Like, <laughs> Just two steps out. There you go, pal. You're, there you you're, go. You're, you're, right you're, there. you're the gorilla. That's what I love. Yeah, that's, that's good. I like that. Yeah. The same right. feel. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, stay at home. Yeah, it's still, still April 9th for Orlando. I'm looking at their Twitter. That still says that's tomorrow, April 9th. Yes, yeah, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's still still showing the actual order is, um, yeah, April 9th. I haven't seen anything different, than that. so it seems like when it's lifted, then they'll do, um, their. Their tapings. Orange County's curfew is eleven to five. So, <laughs> um, so all, all of its municipalities are still in the curfew, eleven p.m. to five a.m. effective until further notice. Ex- exceptions going to or living work, first responders, healthcare, government workers on shift, and medical emergencies. So there's the curfew. Um, yeah, that's that's it. So it <laughs> seems like. Um, executive order going to affect uh, on April 3rd. Um, yeah, so that's as far as we as far as we got now. So, so yeah, so it seemed like they'll go ahead and make those uh, those chain those when when the restrictions are lifted. They'll go ahead and do another set of tapings just in case there's any type of extensions or anything. I personally think that uh, by the time, because I've been following, I do a, I do some studying daily on it, and uh, you know, I, I have I have a whole different 
I have a I have a really I don't have time to get into it, but <clears throat> my view on the whole coronavirus thing is yeah. Like, hey, I am not a conspiracy theorist whatsoever, but I, I've got some some very strong thoughts on this whole thing. Um, very strong thoughts, but um, yeah, we, um, yeah, yeah, we had uh, <clears throat> I know Friday night um, while I was working, we had a doctor. Me and Mike Ryan actually had a doctor uh, come on to talk about. And he said some things that was interesting in line of what you were saying about mm. over oversaturation and the numbers. And yeah. So yeah, it's uh, quite interesting, quite interesting. So, so we shall see. So the new set of tapings are supposed to last them. Um, there's some conflicting reports that they want to do uh, Monday the Bank Live. Um, <laughs> it's not happening here. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we shall see how that goes. I personally think that um, I think I think return to normalcy. I think uh, beginning of June. I think I think things are, go back to normal. Um, I mean, China is where it came from, and they did a lockdown for two weeks, and now you know things are pretty. Well you know they they they've recovered. So so I think you know I, my my thought would be to go down that route see uh, you know, a lockdown seeing a lockdown no i don't think we'll do a lockdown uh because there's like like trump said there's you know we're not supposed to be we're, we're not we're not meant to be locked down okay we're not supposed we're not meant to be we're locked down, down. You know, got a lot of deals got a lot of businesses things. We're not down. Hands like we're just days, not you know? we're just not we're just not created to we be doing, down. doing the right thing okay. right now. You know, just be patient. Patient. Yeah. Patient. <laughs> be patient. No, we weren't created to be locked down. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I, I think you know, uh, uh, the wine. The wine has been killing it, man. I think he's been doing a really good job here in Ohio, uh, and and I and basically from a lot of the press conferences and stuff like that. Um, uh, I I think that they they were saying that the peak should be around uh two weeks, and then you know as far as peak, and then the numbers uh should be expected to be declining after that. So just be patient. We'll be see. Patient. We'll see. We're, 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 we're I do hard. think that um yes. <laughs> I do. Uh, <laughs> Just be patient. You will we do what can do. You know, okay. <laughs> we'll just be just be patient. I ain't got enough egg yet to do the job. There's a lot of deals. Yeah. There's a lot of deals. Okay. I got some orange things. Let's be missing out a lot of deals. Let's just be patient. Very very no. patient. Lots of people. Lots of deals. Lots of patience. Um, I got a test. I got I got approved for the test. <laughs> well, you got to do the finger. Like when you point people, you're like, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah, yeah so we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see though, man. I, I, I personally, with, with the trends, like I said, I, 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 uh, there was a 40 page uh, medical document that I, that I wrote and took notes. And I've been looking at the press conferences and things like that. I've been watching a lot of videos on this. Um, I've heard that this virus could be seasonal too. I've heard that too. It could come back next season like the flu. I mean, let's let's be honest i mean um the flu the, the flu deaths and, and the thing is let me make this very very clear i do not want to minimize any victims of the coronavirus uh my, my thoughts and, and, and right. my, my prayers are strongly and i pray for for families and victims uh, uh who have experienced fatality through the co- coronavirus so i want to make that very 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 clear um comparatively speaking the flu uh, has over three times more deaths uh, this season, from January first to to now, than the coronavirus. So, I think that um, it's one of those things that um, it, it's it's one of those things that flu season. That's pandemic. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, yeah, there's other things too. <clears throat> Um, that's, that's, yeah, 
Um, alcohol related deaths uh, are huge. Yep. You know, um, so yeah, uh, we we shall see. We shall see when it's all. I, I, I'm I'm optimistic about it. I'll say. I thought was done. I'll, I'll say within. I'll say. I'll say June, July. Um, as far as like. You know, I don't see ten person gatherings. You know, ten person restriction in June. I don't see that. But right in time for football. Yeah, yeah. we'll get that. So we'll see. Back. We'll see. I, I don't see this going past. Uh, I, th- I think we'll. I think this will run its course. I think this will be a seasonal thing. I mean, this has been going on since December. You know, this is the third month. Some of you see October, technically. Yeah, the first case I believe was December. Uh, uh, first case uh, officially, you know, document I think was last December in China, and I think here was in February uh, or January. Um, so yeah, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see how this all goes. I just want to, I, you know, there's a lot to be, to learn from this for sure. Um, and I think at the end of the day, I'm excited to see. Uh, a, a big crowd of fans at wrestling again. <clears throat> oh, uh, real quick, Rhea, Rhea Ripley missing time uh, due to visa, visa issues. Um, uh, so, so okay. So this conflicting reports. Meltzer saying that uh, they <laughs> made the call because NXT wants to pop more ratings, which doesn't make sense <laughs> because um, they're doing tapings. So there's going to be not a lot of people there. So the ratings going to be hit anyways. So, and then POW Insiders that she's going back to Australia because she's having some visa issues. So that's the reason why she lost. So the visa issues story sounds, I think both of them has some cre- credibility to them as makes sense as far as why they're doing Charlotte and why they're doing Ripley. If I had to side with one more, I would I would say because of the visa thing. Yeah. Um, so, because to me, it, it just doesn't make sense why they would have Rhea Ripley lose. I don't think that's a good call at all to have Rhea Ripley lose. Um, because I think, I mean, she was the hottest, one of the hottest names, you know, mm-hmm. hottest talent, talent, red hot talent. Um, and you just have her lose to Charlotte, who already had 18 title reigns. I think that's, that's daddy's girl. I think that's stupid. Uh, so we shall see. All right. Well, uh, we've got about 10 minutes, y'all. Let's uh let's make this happen. It's uh time for the flavor of the week. Here we go. It is, it now, is now time, time for, the for the flavor, flavor of, of the, the week. week. All right, for the week, let's do it. Uh we're going to book WrestleMania 37. Book WrestleMania 37. WrestleMania 37. Early predictions. Um, all right. So what are y'all thinking? What are y'all thinking? Uh, Stinger, Undertaker. Give me eight matches at least. Uh, Stinger, Undertaker, cinematic match. Oh, <laughs> no more taker. No more taker. No more taker. Rock, rock and range. Um, yep, I, I can definitely, I can definitely see that. Uh, rock versus King Vasquez make run. Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Triple H against Shane. Why? You know Trip's got to have a match. He missed this year. Oh, he got to have a match. I don't see Trip and Shane, though. I don't, I don't see Trip and Shane. Look. Look what these people are saying. Mike Ryan, Roman versus Rock. Kyle said Becky versus Ronda. Ronnie said Taker versus Sting. Oh. Shane said Rollins versus Reigns. No. No, 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 no. All right, so let's do this. <laughs> Marissa. Let's do this. <laughs> Sasha versus Bailey for the one thousand time. All right, so let's Is that start. No off, <clears throat> yeah, let's start off with the um, 
Let's start off with the WWE Championship match. So the one on Raw. You got yeah. <clears throat> if it's still on Raw. Gosh. WWE Championship match. What I got. Whew. Let's do all. Let's just do all the title matches. Um. Hmm. WWE double I mean, double that, E. Especially less new. Yep, I, I agree. Right, uh, so Brock Lesnar against uh, Lashley, against Bobby Lashley. MVP can uh, do uh, manage manage all your work for Lashley. MVP can talk. Uh, well, he's a heel though. They can change it up in a year. Um, MVP don't look right as a face. Be that's, good. A, that's the thing. I don't want Lashley to be a heel though. I think it's. I think it's. Nah, he got to be face. It's a bad, bad call. Universal Championship. Huh. We talked about this earlier on my show. You know Vince is going to put the, the, the belt on the rock or something against Reigns. Something like that. Yeah. And I'd be cool with that. I'd be cool if they put it on the rock. Damn. Because the point, the point of this one was supposed to have... Um, you know, the, the legends kind of put over the, the newer the newer guys. So that makes sense to me. I'm cool, I'm cool with that. Uh what about Intercontinental Championship? Hmm. Maybe they're like a money in the bank. Even though they got money in the bank, maybe like a ladder match or something. Like yeah, be cool with like a person last ladder match. Yeah, exciting. Put Sammy Zane, you know, he ain't going nowhere. Sammy Zane. Apollo Crews, like six or eight people, they ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> I wish Apollo Crews would make that. Alistair Five. Black. Bobby Owens. Velveteen Dream. Oh, gosh, I hope not. I hope they don't just throw him in a, a match like that. And this is Raw. Sami Zayn's on SmackDown, now. Yeah, he probably get he may get drafted before him. Let's just let's just assume that the IC title still on SmackDown. So these are all SmackDown people. Okay, so Alistair Black wins IC title. Actually, I, I want uh, Alistair Black's on uh, on Raw. Um, U.S. titles on SmackDown on Raw right now. IC titles on SmackDown. Um. Roman Orton? No. Oh gosh, I, that must be. Yeah, I knew it was Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dominic versus Brock. If it was non-title, no way. Not at huh. not at uh, not at not at Mania for sure. Punk, punk, punk against Triple. I'm not. I'm not opposed to that idea, but but no. no. Who's uh? Who's in the SmackDown Intercontinental? Yeah, Mustafa Ali. I can see that. He's still hanging out in the alleys, eating out trash cans, yeah. making that man like he's homeless. <laughs> then he got a bit bus stop. Like, what is what is he? Yeah. All right, we we got a roll. So, uh, what else we got, y'all? Must have put Daniel Bryan in there. Um, um, what's his face? Uh, Gulak. A uh, Gulak. Cool. Yeah. Five, six. Let's do six person. I see. Buddy. Cesaro. Yeah, Cesaro. You know, he's default. Seamus. If you can wrestle anymore. Or to see Murphy. Murphy's on row. Diggler. Yeah. That's a good one, too. All right. So, which one of these are leaving, man? So, heal, heal, heal. Face, face, face. All right. Let's go for now. How about U.S. United States Championship? Oh, good about the Apollo Crews, man. I wish, but I, I doubt that they're going to do that. Um, mm-hmm. U.S. title. Mm. I think Aleister Black can win the U.S. title next year. Yeah. He should be the challenger. Who, who will be a good yeah, fit for him? Challenger. Yeah. Who can hit hard like a good, like a mm. nice, nice stiff competition? 
Oh man, I'm really thinking. Hmm. That's sad we sit here thinking it's audible for Kukulkin's Alistair Black like a... As far as a U.S. Oh yeah, maybe we can do the Mount Rushmore next week, Elvis. Obviously, we forgot what the Mount Rushmore was. Humberto? No way. Humberto versus Alistair Black? I would literally fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> um... Blair versus Creed. Oh, Ricochet. Shay said Ricochet. Not all about Ricochet. Mm -hmm. Ricochet versus Bobby Roode. Maybe Bobby Ricochet Roode's on SmackDown. Roode. Ricochet's on Raw. Oh. So I'm cool with Aleister Black winning it, but I don't want to see Ricochet versus <laughs> Aleister Black at Mania. That That's not... What about good. Drew? Drew McIntyre is a heel? McIntyre is a heel. You know, he'd be good. Alistair Black, is he really face McIntyre? No, he's a he's a baby face right now. He's a world champion baby face. Yeah. Don't think about next year, though. No, I wouldn't want to make him heel again. Uh, yeah. You would definitely not want to turn him. Black versus Dream? No, I wouldn't want to make Dream a heel. Mm -hmm. uh, what about. Uh, 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 Eventually, Adam Cole's gonna get caught up to the main roster. Once you Adam Cole against Black, you know they ain't gonna keep Adam Cole. The US title. Yeah, because you know Cole's not gonna get to any of the top belts. He's like mid card all the way because he's small. You know how mm -hmm. Vince is. Even though he's over, Adam's a good dude. I like Seth. Like that. Seth, okay. Sethy boy. Like that match. Seth is champ. Black can beat him for it. Yep. Uh, so Raw tag team. Don't worry. I'm not worried. <laughs> I'm not doing that right now because that's <laughs> it's about time to leave. So these four are good. Any other special attraction uh, special, special attraction matches? Alonzo says Edge versus Styles. I like that. <clears throat> Um, and me, me, me and Mike Brown was talking just earlier. The agent producer battle royal. I think about all the agents. Like Matt Ryan, Mike Ryan said all the agents and producers WWE have. Arthur's U.S. champ. Elvis. Uh, stop. stop. You know Elvis is trolling us. Stop. No, I, I don't think he's trolling. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for real. I try to help you out, Elvis. All right, well, a couple more, y'all. We got a row. What else y'all got? Oh, come on, Gabriel. Brunt versus think, Mojo. think Mania. Think Marquee. Think Huge. Think about that. So this, Elvis, you're about to be fired from booking. You're you're on there every week. You're on here every week, and I appreciate you. <laughs> but you're about to be fired from booking, like totally fired. Um, Taker versus Fiend, Firefly, Graveyard, Funhouse. You know what? Yeah. Yes, no, I don't want to see take. I don't want to see Taker <clears throat> again. I think this is what you do. You you ride them to the sunset. <clears throat> I think. I think well, there's no need to see, especially. I don't want to see Taker lose for the third time in Mania. I think this is the best way to. I don't want to see Taker again. Um. All right. So let's do. Let's. I mean. So what else then? Cena. Cena against Goldberg. I think Goldberg is starting to be like that once a, once a year wrestler, like Saudi and Mania. Every year be Goldberg. Elvis. Elvis, <laughs> Elvis, 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 Elvis. Cena versus Roderick Strong. Oh my God. Oh no. Uh, Roderick worst. Strong is about the size of Cena's arm. The worst. Cena yeah. versus Triple H. Again. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see. Know, we just we saw that was it twenty two. Oh, ready? Yeah, that's a good one. Good one, good one, brother. Mm -hmm. Keith, Keith, Keith Lee's gonna be Keith Lee versus Brock. Uh, not nah, not for Mania. Mm -hmm. That could be something for like SummerSlam. Or... Yep. <laughs> Bray versus the Fiend. All right. So last one, the Fiend. 
They're probably they might they might do a Tiger versus Fane. I don't want to see it, but I I can see it happening. I can see it happening. Have Tiger win. I don't want to see Taker anymore, though. I don't want to see Taker anymore, but I can I can see them doing that. Yeah, hey, Christian have a have a farewell match. Nah, <laughs> they, they they won't care about that for Mania. Um, although I'm a big Christian fan, but all right, so there we go. So far, that's what we have: uh, WWE Championship, Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley; Universal Championship, The Rock versus versus Roman Reigns; Intercontinental Championship, Zayn Ali, Daniel Bryan. Gulak, Cesaro, and Sheamus. U.S. Championship, South Rollins versus Aleister Black. Eds versus AJ Styles. John Cena versus Keith Lee. And The Undertaker versus The Fiend. All right. <laughs> Mo said, Alonzo said, Goldberg versus his locker, locker room door. door. <laughs> All right. So here are some people that we need to develop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save these. So we're going to develop these. We're going to spend a year, Lord willing, we're going to spend a year developing these. Uh, this card here. I think this is pretty fun. Uh, so Braun Strowman, here's some names that uh, I'm just going to put on here because um, for the sake of um, for the sake of people who still need to, to have a spot. Braun Strowman, I don't see Goldberg coming back. Um, Drew McIntyre, Daniel Bryan. Um, no, Kevin, uh, he's, uh, he's in there already. Kevin Owens. Uh, who else? Is that it? As far as like big names or, you know. Uh, You're really thinking. Is you that cool? it? Um, give me a women's match real quick. Like you said, Becky against Ronda. Ronda got to get a rematch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I suppose that'll work. Um, Oscar. If they have a book her right. They ain't going to give her no love. Where's Rhea going to go? Okay, I'll put Rhea here. I'll put Rhea here. I'll put Charlotte here. <laughs> Make Ryan say Nicholas versus Borwin. Uh, I got one. I got one. Do this. Uh, uh, so Charlotte will have the Raw one Championship for this time, <clears throat> unfortunately. But it would be. Put someone else over, and it will be her because she will be the rumble. I like that. Yep. Cool. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> so this is what we got, y'all. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine matches. All right. I'm cool with this. <clears throat> I'm cool with this. I don't want to see Taker Fiend, but if Taker wins, I'd be cool with it. But I just don't want to see Taker come back, though. I mean, I think this is a perfect way to send them off. I don't want to see it. But if Taker does get the itch, uh, I'll put an asterisk on this. <laughs> if Taker gets the itch, uh, Fiend would be good for him. Um, all right. All right, I think I think that's what yeah so far. Yeah. yeah. I think we can work with that. Good stuff, y'all. All right, cool. All right. Well, we, we will work with uh with this for now and uh go ahead and save it. Good stuff, y'all. So that is it for now, y'all. Uh 419 episodes in the books. Uh until next week, ladies and gentlemen. It's been wonderful. Uh and really enjoyed PNP photo shoot with Ken Doan. On behalf of Evan Tech Prout, I am Chris Featherstone. Until next week, enjoy your week of wrestling. God bless. And always remember, i do it for you. Gotta go. Everybody. <laughs> we gotta go. We're out of time. No, 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 not like this. <laughs> <laughs>